Welcome back, and I get my paper here called the uh, UT, which is our paper from North County, San Diego. A really excellent paper, and it had an interesting article today. I want to get your opinion, Tim. Tim Alexander, of course, is our historian, geopolitical analyst, and kind of anchor on our live stream TV channel. And if you're a member, which means you buy one bottle, any product at all, within the last six months, you are now have a free membership to watch our live stream channel with health issues, geopolitical, etc. It's all up there, and we are expanding our team of contributors, including invitations to people like Professor McCanny and others that will post up statements, video clips, etc. You won't find anywhere else. Let me read this start of this article, I'll get your opinion, because I, I mean, I have to be sitting down or I'll fall down when I read this. I can't believe. Arms for Libyan, Libya went to Islamists, U.S.-backed Qatar, in supplying rebels fighting Gaddafi. This is from the NYT News Service. The Obama administration secretly gave its blessing to arms shipments to Libyan rebels from Qatar last year, but U.S. officials later grew alarmed as evidence grew that Qatar was turning some of the weapons over to Islamic militants. According to U.S. officials and foreign diplomats, oh my surprise, this is like oh my oh my, like the Wizard of Oz. No evidence has emerged <laughs> linking the weapons provided by the Qataris during the uprising against Muammar Gaddafi to the attack that killed four Americans at the U.S. diplomatic compound in Benghazi, Libya in September. No kidding, this is a transshipment point for arms to go to do regime change in Syria. Next paragraph, but in the months before, the Obama administration clearly was worried about the consequences of its hidden hand in helping arm Libyan militants. Concerning that have not previously been reported, the weapons and money from Qatar strengthened militant groups in Libya, allowing them to become a destabilizing force since the fall of the Gaddafi government. That's called regime change and war, and I don't believe there's any public record that Obama actually had a, a, a carte blanche to declare war uh, by the Congress. So we have an impeachable action here. Oh, but, but if, if Israel asks Congress to declare it, I'm sure they will. Oh, I'm sure they would, yeah. And of course, the tail wags the dog of America, or the golem of America. The experience in Libya has taken on new urgency as the administration considered whether to play a direct role in arming rebels in Syria, whether weapon, weapons are flowing in from other countries. How about Patriot 2 missiles? Hmm. Are Patriot 2 missiles weapons? No. These are actually Lego blocks shaped like Patriot 2 missiles. They're not really, they're a Christmas present for the Syrians. Bashir yeah, Assad. Most Patriot 3. The, the, the Dutch have sent some Patriot 2, but the, uh, yeah. the yeah, Germans so, have sent Patriot 3. Yeah, and, and putting them in airspace along the Turkey Syrian border, this is not provocative. Or telling them that if you use these chemical or other weapons because your city, your main city, Damascus, is about to fall because you've armed to the teeth these, these terrorists. And here's what they do. And we've had uh, Ted Shabbat and Wilad Shabbat on the program. They're from the Middle East and from Palestine. Well, he is. Uh, Ted was born here, and his son. And he says, look, they go into the cities in Aleppo and these other cities, these so-called Syrian Free Army, which are not Syrians, by the way. These are from Afghanistan, Iraq. They're from all over the place, Islamic terrorists. Some of the most bloody Muslim extremists you can find on the face of this earth. Yeah, these people live to kill. Anyway, they go into a household, they tell the father, unless you become a suicide bomber or join us and fight and kill people within your government, including relatives of his, that we will kill your family right on the spot right now. We'll rape your wife and then kill her, and then we'll kill all your children. And they do it. So what they often will do, the men will join and try to escape at night. And if you try to escape the Syrian Free Army at night, they kill you. So this is what's going on. And if you're a Christian, if you're, uh, you know, like uh, we call the, the, Christian, the Christian Orthodox in Lebanon, if you're any other group, Jew or whatever, you're dead meat. And, and even if you're Muslim, it doesn't matter. You have to kowtow to their extreme version of Salafi, extreme Recently Muslim. Recently they killed a priest, uh, an Orthodox priest on the streets, and this guy was, uh, was trying to help people that had been kidnapped. And uh, right. then they gorged his eyes out. They tortured the man. And, and I mean, they, they have crucified people, literally crucified people. Uh, we are dealing with... Uh, and, and our government is arming them. And it, psychopathic yeah, yeah, yeah. murder. We, we, we have a sociopathic murdering president that sits and gets his biggest jollies, not from his late night activities with Michelle Obama, after he's, he's he said night, nighty night to his teddy bear and has some night night activities with Michelle. No, no, he gets his jollies Tuesday morning when he goes to the Situation Room with the baseball cards of death. I mean, this is a really weird guy that. A majority of Americans, and partly, of course, this is a voter fraud, but the majority of Americans voted for Obama clause, I call it the Grinchy clause, 
They voted for the baseball cards of death. They voted for him ratifying treaties like the UN Treaty to take over the Internet. The UN Treaty of the rights of the child so that you're, you can't bring your child to church or your child could actually sue you through the International Court of Justice in the United Nations. And for the law of seas to take away all of our rights and mineral rights under the oceans off the coast of America. This is sickening. This man needs to be impeached, and if we don't impeach him immediately, we have hell to pay, literally hell to pay. In 2022, which is 12 years now, I'm going to predict that we'll be like the, the Hunger Games. We will have regions, just like a geopolitical analyst in Russia said two years ago, that he predicts that America, within 20 years, will be six regions, three to six regions, and there will be no more America. It will exist as America-ish regions. There will be no such thing as the United well, States. Well, here, here, here's what I can tell you with uh, uh, pretty solid certainty here. Uh, we are moving uh, to into a major war. Uh, right away. A war that will be bigger than the first or second Gulf Wars. A war that will be bigger than the Afghan war. Uh, a war that would be bigger than all of those put together at a time when we are literally going off the financial cliff. And by the way, at our military are so stretched now, they're gonna, that means a draft. And I have three sons of military age, and there's no freaking way they're going to die in a foreign war theater for Obama and his bankers. So I can tell you right well, now, uh, I know that they want to kill all our young men off, and a lot of our women too, by the way, they're joining the military, and they want them to die in a foreign theater and come back broken and receive inferior health care. In fact, we talked in the first hour to Mike Connolly about the VA. Do you know how long the VA wait now, on average, to get chemotherapy if, they're, if they have cancer? Five months. Uh, hard to say, but I don't believe in chemotherapy. That means you get your chemotherapy posthumously after you're dead. You get your chemo. Even though chemo, I don't support. I don't support full dose chemo, but you might save you. But you get your chemotherapy posthumously after the tumor is so large, there's no way you'll ever get it reversed or even slow the progression of the disease and it's metastasized everywhere. You get your chemo at a stage where it's useless. There are, and better there off are, to are soldiers who have been on their fifth tour now. That's ridiculous. Uh, either in uh, Iraq yeah. or Afghanistan or a combination thereof. Uh, my nephew uh, saw two tours in the Marine Corps. Right. And uh, uh, in a highly intense war, this is a formula for toxicity, mental illness, and broken bodies, minds, and spirits. Actually, we're losing more soldiers to suicide than uh, to enemy fire. Exactly. In fact, in 2012, we had more soldiers commit suicide than due to IEDs and enemy fire by, uh, they call it, uh, well, green or blue. There's a spiritual and psychological aspect to being there when it's, you, you, you know in your heart that it's all a bunch of BS and you're not really fighting to defend your country or the people that you're supposedly there to help defend the people you, in that country. Yeah. You're, you're there to defend the heroin, tra heroin trade, and you're there to defend the banker's ability to generate black op cash for black op projects that you will never see because you're not selected to go to the underground lair for the global elite, the congressmen and senators, and the elite of the world when your family is fried by coronal mass ejections, solar storms, and other disasters, and starving. And this movie coming out next year that's going to be coming out with uh, this big movie star, what's his name? Uh, it's called uh, World War Z, about the zombie apocalypse. Homeland Security are yeah. running this thing called the zombie apocalypse drills all over the country. And the reason is, within four days to two weeks, guess who the zombies are? Us. Because our neighbors who are not prepared with food, water, and self-protection, they'll be the zombies that will be starving to death, sick, tired, and frightened, and acting like zombies, ready to literally eat. Yeah, I carried a link to a story on that about two days ago. Yeah. yeah you you, you can't make this stuff up. No, and I you tell really people, they say, they say, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. I said, no, I believe in reality. When I worked in emergency... Actually, I think you're through. being conservative. Well, I can only give them so much or I know that they'd shut it off. Welcome back, and uh, Tim... We've got a lot of stuff to cover today, and I want you to, you know, I, I, what I want people to do is get angry. As in the Bible says, be angry and sin not. 
God is commanding us to be angry. He's not saying, oh, you know, when you get up today, you might want to get not get angry. Just stay cool. Go meditate. Go do your yoga. Do breathing exercises. Lay in the tub with you know a lot of salt, so you're kind of like in zero gravity, like the Dead Sea. No, God is saying you need to get up and you need to get pissed. But you need to be godly pissed. You need to sin not. In other words, you need to call on God's wisdom to tell you what to do. You need to take into consideration that if we don't activate our neighbors. We are going to deal with a zombie apocalypse. World uh, War Z uh, is a coming. Few, a few hours ago, one of my students, who's a middle-aged man, uh, we were uh, we had a few minutes to kill between uh, sessions, and and we were sitting there talking, and I, you know, about uh, Syria and all, and right. I said we're getting real close now uh, to you know what could be World War Three. And he says, no, no, America is exhausted. Our military is exhausted. Americans don't want another war. And I said, that's fine, but they don't control our policy. You know, and yeah, we There's always a way to manipulate the American public into a situation. I have, one thing I've learned is a statement by Napoleon. He says, never interrupt your enemy and he's making a drastic error. And one of the big drastic errors is never underestimate the naivety of the public, the manipulation of the public, or the stupidity of the public. The fact that after a first term of Obama they voted for him, after destroying the economy and our foreign policy, and the fact that this man smirking, who received the Nobel Teeth Prize, not Peace Prize, the Nobel Teeth Prize, is <laughs> said by a youth youngster a few weeks after, we have a man who glories at death, who says he's a man of peace, but it actually is spelled P-I-E-C-E, pieces of people and nations. He is into regime change. This guy really gets off psychic jollies from seeing blood and guts and destruction. And at the same time, he says he's taking his marching orders from NATO and the United Nations. So I'm not underestimating and the they stupidity take, of the And they public. take their orders from a very, very tiny elite. The Most of the people in the public are either frightened or they're going to get lose their handouts, number one, or they've been fluoridated and vaccinated or, or miseducated so badly that they think their rights come from the what we call the glorious emperor-in-chief. Obama is transforming himself literally in the second term into the Fourth Reich. And we talked about in the first hour with, with um, Michael O'Connelly. Now, if they had well, everything alternative Everything is about to change. Right, everything. Everything and, is about to change because economically it's, it, we're set up for absolute economic Armageddon. Right. But when a general Middle East war begins, even if it doesn't begin World War Three, and I believe it will, even if it doesn't do It's that, a stuttering war. I call it a stuttering war. The economic effect <clears throat> from the military action and the economic impact will change everything yes. on this planet and everything in America. When you think, if you think gas is high now, try 15 or $20 a gallon, if you can even buy it. Uh, you think food is high? How about four times the amount? Uh, you know how you can tell you were in cetera, Cuba? Et cetera. Look, we're, 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 uh, Tim, we are pounding at the door of Armageddon saying, uh, let us in. Tim, let us Tim in. A, little, a little humor. Uh, have, can you know how you can tell if you're in a, in, in a specific country of Cuba compared to any other Hispanic country like Nicaragua, Guatemala, or Mexico? You know how you can tell the difference if you're looking at the men? No. Yeah, very big shoulders from pushing vehicles. <laughs> I was going to say, all the old cars. <laughs> yeah. Very big shoulders. These guys are getting otherwise skinny, but they have huge shoulders. Of like These guys have pushed their 1950 version cars a lot. <laughs> they don't have gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a buddy of mine he had a... Had a uh, a license to fly into Cuba. He was a uh, he was a pilot in the Caribbean, and uh, he he would fly in, and he said it was really something to see all these old junkers that they string together, and they're, they're you know they're they're old 1950 Chevys and Cadillacs and stuff, and they're still growing. But oh, the, yeah. here's the thing: if you want to see where we're headed right now, listen to CNN, listen to Fox, listen to all the mainstream media. This is the hysteria. They're going into the hysteria phase of the war drums. And the war drums are not just beating on them. They're pounding the living hell out of the war drums now. And it's if, if Assad uses chemical weapons against his own people, well, first off, he's not going to do that. Secondly, he said uh, if they had them, they would only use them uh, in defense of the country. 
and we're getting ready to to attack. That's why the the, the Patriot missiles are going in to help provide air cover. Uh, they're talking about sending 75,000 American troops plus thousands and thousands of other NATO troops into Syria. Now, folks, we're talking about a ma- and and this is this is the lie. This is the, the low end. That was low ball yet at the beginning. Wave, wave number one. Wave number one. Wave number one means that this is going to become a war to end all wars, and it may stop for a period of time of a false peace treaty, which the Bible predicts will occur when they partition the state, which is already happening with the UN ratification of Palestine. Uh, with the rebuilding of the of the Herodian Temple, which can start with just an overnight uh, tent of meeting of Moses, which they can erect overnight, and the fact is we are moving very quickly. Well, and they've already the, got the plans. I mean, they they, they they've what, read the what I've said, and, I, and I'm the only one who's saying this. I'm going to repeat it so people will not be able to say they can go back to the video clips and audio clips and say, yeah, Deagle said that. I mean, maybe he is a prophet. I'm saying to you that there is only one man on earth that can declare the rebuilding of the Herodian Temple and it's the U.S. president. That that scroll was passed on from George Bush to Barack Obama and if he continues to remain president or if he's replaced, only a U.S. president can declare that. Only the United States can actually create this disaster and only the U.S. with NATO. Who's the heavy lifter in, in NATO? Do you think these other NATO nations are actually the heavy lifters with their economy going through the floor? No, it's America and the U.S. taxpayer that's going to pay trillions of dollars for well, the useless in, in war. In terms of military technology, America is the only nation that has the full spectrum of equipment and technologies necessary. Even in Spend Libya, it. which was a very low-scale war uh, by the French and British Air Forces, uh, they had to use American uh, technology and, and some American uh, aircraft for, for certain things because they don't have the full spectrum. Uh, but what we're, what we're looking at here is a major war. This is like we're on the eve of the second Gulf War and the first Gulf War and the war in Afghanistan, folks. This is what we're talking about. They are well, setting I, us up for a false flag, the mother of all false flags, no, but that start WW3. I'm going to make a little a little modification to that. World War Three started at 9/11. World War Three, in the sense, the prelude started. Well, in yeah, I, I'm, I'm speaking of the, the economic phase. We, but, we, we uh, talked about this off but the military phase, But the military four phase started full force, I believe, with the so-called regime change of Libya, Tunisia, and the so-called Arab Spring. It moved from an economic phase and a terrorism phase with, with Oklahoma City and 9-11. We are now in what's called a proxy war, Islamic fundamentalist phase, and we're moving quickly to beyond proxy war to directly killing Russian generals, military troops, and Chinese troops, etc., that will be defending these nations. And once we have Iranian troops inside Syria dying... If you look at Putin's, Putin's face, he was in Turkey yesterday, and he, he looked like a defeated man. He went to try to stop World War Three, and the Turk shot him down. He probably offered him billions, and they still shot him down. Well, they even have a pipeline running to Turkey because they have no oil from Iran, and yet they still want to attack Iran because when they attack Syria, they have attacked Iran. Welcome back, and we're joined by Alexander Bachman. just want to use a, a couple of words I remember, and I'm going to paraphrase them because it's not going to be exact out of The Lord of the Rings. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, book, a trilogy series, The Lord of the Rings. And I see, and I'm just going to paraphrase this, I see a great darkness come upon the land of Mordor. And uh, the dark lord Sauron, of course, in his age, called the, created the one ring to rule all the rings. What we have, the one ring, is the global elite in the city of London, to rule all the rings of financial systems around the planet, and they're ready for the final step. They're ready for the Third World War. They're ready for the economic phase of that. They're ready for the dissolution of all sovereignty and nation states and the destruction of the last republic in history, which is America. And believe me, whether it's for the health of, of Mexico, which is now in a drug war that literally 
they talked about this in the Fox News last night, we're worried about a Benghazi event occurring now in Mexico, our next-door neighbor, because we've never dealt properly with the drug war, we haven't helped the Mexicans, and now this is culminating to a point where it's going to spill across the border, literally a drug war where they have as advanced or more advanced weapons and special forces in the Afghanistan theater. This is really crazy. Uh, so, Alexander, tell us about what's going on in Mexico and how close are we to the, quote, the Benghazi of Mexico. Alexander, are you there? Uh, we we uh, we'll, we'll try to reconnect them. Uh, my microphone. Uh, hello, Tim. Uh, yeah, well, oh, the new okay. president of Mexico that just came in on the 1st of December is had top-ranking Mason. Uh, he's a Knights Templar. His name is Enrique Peña Nieto. That's with an Enya. And the Enya is the end with a little tilt on the top of it. Well, this guy is the Televisa puppet. He's like the mass media puppet put into power for a reason by the drug cartels. We know that he is controlled by the cartels and the, the terrible alliances that have been uh, uh, made uh, with uh, the the the, basically, Felipe Calderon, the sexenium of terror that we just went through, 130,000 dead. Of what are the estimates of the people that have died in these six years is uh, minimal because now they're saying that there are mass graves all over Mexico that are still to be found. But now we have a CIA operative claiming that uh, uh, a corrupt Colombian law enforcer uh, is now advising Peña Nieto and that's a, an ominous sign of the Colombia style of narco state that Mexico is going to uh, begin to uh, uh, be seen as in the next six years. I believe that Enrique Peña Nieto is just a puppet in power. Uh, the true uh, marionette, uh, a, a true marionette that is being uh, manipulated from the outside interests by Obama, by Holdern, and by all these people that are feeling uh, and uh, this uh, drug drug state where basically we're seeing mass kill and a beta uh, program for the new world order that's what we see I, uh, the, the, I've, I've spoken with sociologists from various universities in Mexico and they concur that what happened in Ciudad Juarez is the massive killing of people indiscriminately in the streets is uh, akin to an experiment of some social engineering program in order well, to implement it in, when the United States go, goes into civil war. Well, what, what, let me explain a couple of things that you are very familiar with. Long Beach, California was given to the Communist Chinese as a major off-shipping port for the, for the uh, Hutchinson and Wampoa, People's Republican Army. The uh, Freeport Bahamas and every single uh, port including Ensenadas where, you know, Ensenadas, Mexico, and Via Cardenas, etc. Every single port in Mexico is completely owned and controlled and funded by the Communist Chinese. What's and going what on is works. all of the armaments that come into the United States, most of the guns that come in to arm the gangs right across the United States from Los Angeles to Chicago are manufactured in China and shipped in containers where they're fully aware that those guns are coming in through primarily the port of San Pedro, California, Long Beach, California, from the Communist Chinese. That's a fact. And our government's fully aware of this and part of the scheme to make sure the gangs have the most advanced weapons, body armor, and attack weapons, so that when all hell breaks loose, and I talked to people at the Federal Center, you know what they told me? As long ago as the 60s, they were stockpiling gold, drugs, including bales of, of uh, heroin and cocaine, underground at the U.S. Federal Center in Colorado to exchange with gangs as a means of currency once society breaks down. This was planned 40, 50 years ago. This is nothing new. Well, I had you know, directly I had from very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I had a very interesting meeting with uh, 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 an employee of Homeland Security in person uh, last right. week. We were sitting down. We talked uh, for 30 minutes. And he came out openly and said, Obama is the problem. The drug war is the United States' fault. It's not anything that has to do with Mexico. Mexico has been spiraled into this drug war because of me uh, American interests. He talked about Mina, Arkansas. He talked about the operation by you-know-who. 
Um, we can say the names. I mean, it's eventually being recorded. Well, I mean, and, uh, yeah, but, but I mean, Arkansas so. incidents and of course Bill Clinton and George Bush uh, Jr. When they well, went into uh, yeah. when they went in and killed all these people at the Branch Davidian compound, is because two of the Branch Davidians worked at the airport in Mina, uh, sorry, in, in, uh, in at that compound that worked in worked at the local airport where most of the drugs are being transshipped in through Texas to the United States to be used. So in other words, the drug trade is a war between our drug cartel uh, proxies and the, uh, and the competitors. That's what's going on. And the global bankers make the money off of it, and, and they facilitate it globally. Right, and that money, by the way, is cycled into black op projects, which 99% of it goes into weird projects for mind control, weapon systems, and underground civilizations, and the bifurcation of our civilization to survive a global cataclysm. And it's a lot more than just a nuclear war. People say, oh, they're just trying to be in bunkers for nuclear war. Do you know how long you need to stay underground in a bunker for nuclear war? Two weeks. That's it. You know, at the end of two weeks, there's not enough radiation, even if you're directly underneath a nuclear weapon, that'll have any effect on you. Two weeks, there's enough radiation. You can come up without even a rad suit on, and you won't have any problems. Just take a few nutraceuticals, because it's not like Fukushima is constantly weeping radiation. When you have a nuclear bomb blow up, it's gone. It vaporizes, and, and the fall off in radiation is so low that as long as you don't drink the water and you have a simple uh, nutraceuticals to protect you, within two weeks you can move troops around and do military operations. And I was involved with a project in 1973 helping to test drugs and nutraceuticals so our military could do operations within two days of a nuclear attack. So when people say they're building all these underground bunkers because they want to stay underground for nuclear war, a nuclear war is going to last 90 minutes. It's not going to last long. 90 minutes, everything you have is going to be thrown at the enemy. Everything you've got. Now we Use it or lose the, it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so no, this idea that we're going to have a prolonged war and you need to stay underground for years is BS. If you can survive two weeks underground, you can come back up. No, they're expecting something a lot worse than the nuclear war, which is why they're building up supplies to stay down there as long as decades. The nuclear facility, protection facility they had off I-70 in Colorado could house over 60,000 people. And I have this from former President Ford was also got a, a, I called a golden ticket. You know, they, they talk about the chocolate factory to get the golden ticket. Well, uh, President Ford and many other elite had the golden ticket to go to this facility, and they had underground factories, shopping centers, hospitals, etc. They can stay there decades or maybe even centuries. We are literally seeing the building of the time machine by... H.G. Wells of the land of the Morlocks underground. Well, they're going to yeah, issue you the know, new. That's uh, not going to. That's not, not going to save them. them. Well, it's right in Revelation six. You know, they shall hide themselves in the rocks and the deep places and layers of the earth, but they shall not hide themselves from the face of the Holy One of Israel. That's where we're at. And people say, "Well, Doctor Deagle, why do you always bring religion in?" Because I said, without spirituality, none of this will ever make sense. That is right. Well, what does make sense is that all these underground installations that are being built, and this was uh, information directly given to us by uh, super soldiers that worked in the projects up at the United Nations Intelligence Team called right. UNIT. Uh, these are the guys that work inside NATO in order to, uh, to move all the drug shipments into Europe. And, uh, I mean, he told me that it is... Yeah. Keep that thought. We'll be right back. Alexander. do some spiritual discernment. A lot of time I got a contact, an email from uh, Major Ed Dames who does remote viewing and uh, Ed uses a technology used by the U.S. military to kind of use questions in the subconscious. But you see people that are called as prophets don't necessarily know everything. We get pieces of visions here and there. Sometimes God puts it all together. Well, the other day he gave me one and I'm going to give people this vision. I don't know when it's all going to occur, but I can tell you the sequence. The first thing is I saw a late afternoon red sky appear. And then all of a sudden, I started to see asteroids coming, whipping through the atmosphere. And you see these, if you ever seen an asteroid or comet, they leave a, a kind of a yellow tail as they enter the atmosphere and explode. And then all of a sudden, uh, you see a yellow line. And then all of a sudden, there's so many of them that the entire sky burst into yellow, a bright yellow sky. And, uh, and, and, and what happened is it was a period of quiescence. I can't tell. It was days, weeks. 
but all of a sudden there was a major superquake and the crust of the earth started to move the entire continent so where the sun rose changed and then a major storm on the sun and they knew this object was moving past the sun was a red dwarf star and a ex giant explosion occurred on the sun and it didn't hit us directly but it glanced and the magnetic field was bowed in and all of a sudden if you went out during the day you got fried within minutes you got second degree burns and went blind uh, that's what I see coming and I don't know when it's going to come but I know that whatever the plans of the globalists they're preparing for a lot more than a nuclear war they're preparing for a lot more than a nuclear war get that straight what they expect to happen is they're literally preparing and that's why they don't care about the debt they don't care about how much money they spend or whether they print more money they don't care because they're sequestering away food shelter they've even got a seed stock of individuals that may not even know that they're going to be quote, grabbed and sequestered into underground facilities as sea stock for a new civilization once civilization falls. People think that can't be, Dr. Deagle. You're just exaggerating. I said, I got this from the inside, from people inside the deepest, if you want to call dark secrets of what these maniacs are planning on doing. They believe they're the keepers of civilization. You can't get inside the twisted minds of these control freaks. They actually believe this. Well, you know, there's there's some very, very strange coincidences going on. And I, 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 my late wife, Michelle, used to say, you know, she didn't believe in coincidences, and, and I tend to agree with her. But, it, okay, December 21, that's three, that's what, two, two weeks from tomorrow, right? Okay. Oh boy. So, uh, two weeks from tomorrow. Well, that's about the time the Middle East, uh, the general Middle East war is apt to just blow up sometime real soon, uh, which could very well also begin the Third World War. Well, let, let, let me give you an, uh, what the truth is. And, and hold on now, hold on, I'm not done. Because yeah. you can say, okay, well, maybe, 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 maybe they're, they timed it, maybe it's an uh, accident, a coincidence. No, also, uh, you have everything changes is going on. You have 110 to 112 volcanoes in Japan, and 48 of them are getting ready to uh, to blow their tops. 48. Well, let, me, let me insert something. There's two points that I wanted to make that fit in perfectly what you're saying. Number one, when the globalists do something on a global scale, whether it's the placement of a city along ley lines or specific timing on dates, everything that the globalists do is ceremonial. Number two, <coughs> on December 21st, we're at the midpoint of a 30-year transition through the galactic plane that occurs every 62 million years. And we're going to get Kobe, uh, Cody uh, Jones back on from the LaRouche Foundation to talk about this. And we also have some other scientists. Uh, next week we'll be getting back on Professor McCanny, and I'm going to ask this because I have all the reference literature on this. Every 62 million years, we're at the 26,000-year cycle where the, we're at the what's called the area of the... Of the, of the going through the galactic plane where we're not only in alignment that occurs every 26,000 years we're at the 105,000 year uh, cycle for ice ages the, the 11,500 800 year cycle for uh, many ice ages and the 360 year cycle for what's called maunder cooling periods all of these occurring at a time when we are passing through the galactic plane which changes what's called the Higgs field now you know about the Higgs field the Higgs field is what's called the fifth dimension. It's what wormholes are made. So if we were able to make a starship enterprise and we were able to create a what's called a wormhole or a warp drive, it means we have to compress space in front of us and expand space behind us, which makes you theoretically capable of moving at beyond the speed of light. You literally pass through space-time rather than uh, through space. That what what I'm talking about here is as you pass through it, you change the plasma physics of the stars and the planets. Like our planet is a nuclear reactor with a crust, so solar activity in the sun is going to go way out, uh, off of normal. <laughs> Major storms, especially when you have a object that is several hundred or thousand times stronger magnetic field than the sun at a tiny fraction of its size, maybe a millionth of its weight or size, and the a debris field, which is right out of the Bible, that talks about a red sky and about these things. We're going to have things happen that are part of the same cycle that occurred at the time of Moses, but a lot worse. We're going through cycles that have not heard happened on Earth since the fall of the dinosaurs 62 million years ago. Now, this is not airy fairy, and we're not setting dates. What I'm telling you is, after 2012. When we pass through the December 21st line, we're past the midpoint, which means 
when these, the magma chamber of Mount Sumi in Japan is filling, and these volcanoes are getting ready, and the ter- permafrost in and, the north and many is, other places, but, and, but and the permafrost in the is north a is good example. Yeah, and the permafrost is is, is melting because of under uh, permafrost uh, volcanism, and the Gakkal Range, which is a 1,500 mile uh, kilometer long range, as high as the Swiss Alps of volcanoes that are firing off, and 23,000. Uh, if you want to call venting super chambers of, of superheated water up to several miles at the bottom of the ocean, I call the radiator of the oceans, 23,000 volcanoes are spewing like crazy, heating up the oceans. That's why we're having all this weird climate, plus the cutting off of the Macondo drill site in the Gulf of Mexico, which has completely disconnected the pacemaker of the world climate. And we talked about this story. That's why we have a line of storms that is so devastating in Russia, they have a backup of traffic of 34 miles between St. Petersburg and Moscow. Northern China is freezing. There's a lot of snow in Russia, by the way. I've been there in winter. Yeah, this is not normal. I've lived in places like in Alberta where you can get drifts of 30 feet and you can have really what I call horrible storms that you just can't believe it can be that cold or that much snow. But guess what? This even freaks out the Russians. They know this is this is otherworldly. This is like that movie, you know, the day after tomorrow. You know, where all of a sudden there's super storms that accumulate, like Sandy, which by the way was bioengineered. This storm was a storm that collected two or three storm cells and they moved it and it, they made a right angle turn well, and sat it, over well, there. Politically, what it did, it killed the momentum that that Romney was was building. Yeah, Romney Romney was killed by Sandy, which was a storm that was engineered by Space Command. Now, I'll tell you what the end game is. The end game is it's run by the devil and his minions, and they're ready now to, to institute the mark of the beast. They have to blow the economy and kill us with debt. They want to move to a biometric currency. Most people aren't aware that every currency dollar that they carry already has a trackable RFID chip. Now, I know there's experts out there that say otherwise. They'll say, oh, no, the reader distance is only 80 centimeters. Wrong. If you hit it with the right magnetic pulse and have the right type of sensor guns, which the U.S. government does have, you can hit an RFID chip directionally 400 meters away, and you can tell you what, how many denominations you're carrying, even in a vehicle at 70 miles an hour going through a, uh, a tollway. So let's get a reality check here. The goal of the government is to have, and this is the FBI, by the way, has a, a literally a court order they're moving now, so not only do they want to have Obama have control of the Internet through the United Nations, they want the FBI to have all of your emails and all of your information try and your GPS coordinates of your use of your cell phone, even when it's off, trackable continuously anywhere in the country. So in other words, they'll know your GPS coordinates because you get an iPad or an iPhone. They want to know that. They also want to have, by the way, they've also ruled now to have Two years of all your tweets. So all your tweets are going to be kept in case you make a If you don't want your, oh, no. if you want to turn oh. your phone off and not have it followed, you get a uh, where the uh, pop-up uh, toasting toaster things come in. You know the pop-up uh, things right. you put in your toaster, and it's aluminum wrapped, and right. you put your cell phone in there and seal it up. Yeah, or just exactly. a box. It won't box receive. Of, get a good box. You put it in. You can, you can go to Les EMF and get what's the a Faraday cage wrap, which is basically a Faraday, and that blocks it immediately. You can put it in a yeah. in a wrap of the materials. If people say, "Well, the New World Order is a delusion," Doctor Deagle, you're a crazy. I said, "No, you're gutless, you're stupid, and you're crazy." And actually, what I call the it, world, vicious ignorance. New World Order is not a solution. It's yeah, and by the way, we're we're not starting. The, the, the World War Three is not a future uh, horror. It's an ever present action. It's actually happening Satan, in the world. a loser and a liar, and he wants to annihilate us all, and that's what the New World Order is all Closing about. comments, Alexander, he too. he lies right? to his minions. Alexander, They're closing comments. They're going to die, too. Okay, just prepare and know that the NSA is tracking everything you do. Go research what they're doing. William Binney. Exactly. Uh, I tell people, every phone, fax, and emails was always tracked. They're just coming out and being bold enough to tell you to your face, hey, we want all your tweets and your tracking. We want to know the GPS coordinates of your cell phone so we can hit you with a directed energy weapon or a taser bolt.